This extension exercise for Module 3 asks you to look in some detail at just one of the life cycle issues. Here we ask you to identify the conceptual design issues that will result from consideration of the retirement concept of the domestic dwelling system. That is, we're looking to see why we should be worried about retirement when we're just buying the system. Surely that's a problem for somebody else. Well, it may surprise you that it's almost always in the interest of the system owner to think about, and probably therefore pay some additional acquisition cost, for the retirement of the system. Let's look at our domestic dwelling, for example. A simple three-step process can be used for the development of a retirement concept for a system. First, we can identify the reasons for the system retirement. Well, the system may have reached the end of its life and no longer be usable and or supportable, or may have been damaged beyond economical repair, or it may have been destroyed. Or it may just have reached the end of its current life cycle, because, despite still being usable and supportable, the owners may not need the system anymore, due to a change in business focus, or perhaps just simply a desire to move to a bigger building. The next step, then, is to identify, for those reasons for retirement, what the options for retirement are actually going to be for the method of retirement. For example, there are a number of options. The system or its elements may be able to be recovered, that is, reused or refurbished or remanufactured in some way. The complete system may be able to be reused in a second life cycle in its original role or in a diminished role. In some cases, the system may be disassembled in order to salvage working elements that can be reused individually. If the system can't be reused immediately in its original role, it may be refurbished, that is renovated, renewed or reconditioned by repainting, replacing worn parts, renewing lubricants and seals and replacing coolants. Or it could be remanufactured, that is disassembled and rebuilt using original and replacement parts to meet the original specifications. Or it could be recycled. Raw materials can be extracted from the system and recycled, generally in some different form or sold as scrap. The system may be destroyed and disposed of as waste, or placed in storage if no other method is tenable. And finally, in addition to consideration of how to dispose the system, the business needs to consider how it intends to retire at the end of its first life cycle, by such means as sale, or lease, or trading. Now once the reasons for potential retirement have been identified, designers can identify the design issues relating to the products that make up the system. For disposal, considerations consider how to include the costs of disassembly and transportation, the need to be careful in our use of hazardous materials, as well as those that may have security implications. We need to consider the available design data, such as drawings. And for recovery, considerations include the cost for preparation for sale. Let's look at our domestic dwelling example, and the first step, the reasons for retirement. During early retirement, the homeowners may consider the following seven possibilities for retirement of the house. Option 1. While the house has served the family well, some unexpected change in family composition or size means that a larger or smaller house is required. Option 2. The house is still very useful, but the owners have retired from the workplace and they're liquidating their assets. Preparation for retirement. Option 3. The house is still suitable, but an opportunity has arisen to move to a more suitable house leaving this house surplus to requirements. Option 4. The house is suitable, but the family's financial circumstances have worsened and the mortgage is no longer affordable. Option 5. The house is still suitable, but the family's financial circumstances have worsened and they desire to make some financial advantage from the ability to free up one or more rooms. Option 6. The building's been destroyed or it's uninhabitable for some reason, perhaps due to some catastrophic event such as a fire, an earthquake, a storm, a flood, or willful destruction, and it must be replaced. Option 7. The building has reached the end of its life, and it's no longer inhabitable. So, based on these seven possible options, let's look at the potential methods for retirement. So here are the, some potential options. Option 1. If the house is uncomfortable because it's either too large or too small, there are two options for retirement of the building. Put it up for sale or use the house as an investment property and lease it to tenants. For options 2, 3 and 4, the owners are liquidating their assets and so the preferred method of retirement is most probably sale. Recognise in option 4 where they are um, under financial stress that may be a bit more urgent than the others. In option 5, the house is to be reused or leased as accommodation. In options 6 or 7, if the building's been destroyed or reached the end of its life, 
The family has three broad options for clearing the current site and rebuilding in the current location, rebuilding and then selling or leasing the building while moving to another location, or selling the current site as an empty lot and moving on to a new location. Now if we just look at those options and recast them, to summarise, we really only have then four potential retirement methods. Sale, as we can sell the house outright and move to a new house. We can lease the house, so we go and buy a new house and just lease this current house, or lease some rooms in the house, and then finally clear the site and sell the site. Let's look at the design issues that result from each of those potential retirement methods. Let's look at sale. Under options 1, 2 and 3, the house was to be sold. Now to ensure that the best price is available as, as quickly as possible, especially when it's being forced in sale in option 4, the house should be as desirable as possible to as wide a range of possible prospective buyers. That means the family will need to consider the needs of other home buyers when designing the home. Or in other words, they might wish to avoid designing the house to be ideally suited to their circumstances wherever they might differ slightly from the normal family. Additionally, any refurbishment that's required must be able to be accomplished as quickly as possible, particularly if large pieces of fixed equipment or built-in furniture will move with the family. Lease of the house. Under option one, the family might retain the house and rent it out. Again, as with sale, the house must be designed so it's as desirable as possible to as wide a possible range of prospective tenants. Additionally, system elements such as a swimming pool or a very carefully manicured garden can be looked after by the owner when the house is owner-occupied, but can become very difficult maintenance issues when the house is rented out, which can therefore reduce the overall income from the investment property, or at the very least, increase the time taken to manage the investment. Lease of rooms. Under option 5, the family leases out one or more rooms of the house. In this case, consideration must be given to the desired access to shared facilities from both the owner and the tenant's perspective. In some cases, it may be as simple as providing the facility of privacy of use of shared bathrooms. In others, a separate entrance may be necessary. And perhaps even the ability to account separately for water and electricity and gas usage. The nature of the potential lessees must also be considered. Families will place different constraints than individuals will place on the system. The building should be designed to accommodate these aspects, or at least to be able to add them on quickly and cheaply when required. The clearing of the site. Under options 6 and 7, the site will have to be cleared prior to either rebuilding or sale of the empty lot. Designers must take into account any opportunity to recover materials, or at least to ensure that they're safely destroyed. Well, we hope you enjoyed the Module 3 extension exercise. As you'll have seen, there's much to be done in conceptual design, even when considering something as far away as retirement and disposal.